This is J-Man from MusicMarauders.com here with Whitewater Ramble. How are you guys doing? It's doing great. Right? Yeah, doing great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so a few questions for you guys. Um, with a saturated bluegrass scene here in Colorado, um, what does it take to stand out and how does Whitewater Ramble differ from other Colorado bluegrass string bands? That's a really good question. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Really myself. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, I mean, it is it, it is saturated, I guess, to a point. I mean, but if people are still willing to pay to go see it, I mean, is it really saturated? I don't know. I can't tell. It seems like everybody's growing, having success. But, um, you know, we, we, we're not the type of band that necessarily just said, we're going to play whatever we play and how we sound is how we sound. You know, like, we think about, like, what our image is and what we're kind of portraying. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the areas we've tried to bridge is, obviously the instrumentation of the the standard jam grass bluegrass band but try to morph a little bit into the into the string cheese realm of that that kind of you know disco dance party vibe sure. including some of those sounds um, but also not completely losing the elements of um, like another string band that we have a lot of influence from the David Crispin quintet it's mm -hmm. a lot of mandolin fiddle harmonies unison very tight very fast sure. that I feel like a lot of the jam grass bands, as soon as they add drums, I feel like they start to lose some of the element of the tightness, and everything is just a big, long, open solo that it gets loose. That, that gets loose but peaks out, you know, and it's loud and explosive. We're trying to, you know, do those things too, uh, but I think also that's an element that uh, Adam and I bring with the Mando Fiddle is we try to keep things very tight, very precise, very crisp, uh, and not lose some of that original acoustic string music and, and bluegrass flair, and we can go 90 degrees in, in one song sometimes. Sure. So I think that maybe gives us a little more diversity than some of the other bands seem to be more traditional and other bands seem to be just dance party all the time. So I think we're kind of in that middle road. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, how would you guys classify your sound? Hmm. Again, that's going to be... Um, I mean, we all, we all come from various musical backgrounds. and um, I, I don't know, I started out listening to classic rock, rock and roll, and so that's sort of my background as far as the kind of stuff I like to listen to. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that each of us brings some element of that to, to how we play. I, I certainly pretend I'm in a rock band, you know? um, and I know that, that others of us have that same sort of feeling and influence. Um, mm -hmm. On the other hand, I think all of us have also really gotten into, uh, and uh, myself included certainly, gotten into uh, just listening to and, and really absorbing a lot of that. Um, Neo, Neo, having their acoustic music, and that was that was certainly a new thing to me. You know, with the I don't know, the Halo Flight generation of players and everything, I got into that, and that really okay. Now I'm thinking, you know, it's not just a rock and roll band. Maybe trying to get some of that other stuff in there. So I know that um, certainly each one of us brings elements of our own, you know, musical past to it, um, and then obviously mixed with uh, what our instrumentation is. Speaking to that, what are some of your musical pasts? What do you guys? What influenced you guys to kind of go to? Bluegrass. I mean, it's not. It is bluegrass, but it isn't. Right. It is because of the instruments. Right. Mm -hmm. um, string music, I guess. Right. But what kind of pulled you guys towards playing this genre? I guess. Mm. I like playing the fiddle. Mm -hmm. I enjoy playing the fiddle for people, mm -hmm. and so I look for bands and musicians to play with that can use a fiddle, and in which the fiddle belongs. You know. Sure. So like, it wouldn't really be appropriate necessarily for me to like go and join like a heavy metal band. Right. Although, like, maybe one day, maybe one day a week, I might wish that I could, you know, do that. But, um, you know, uh, uh, I also I wanted to say, just in response to the previous question about what kind of, how would you describe the, the band's music? Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, said rocked out bluegrass at one point, and I always thought that was a really good way to put it. Rocked out bluegrass because yeah. you know it's bluegrass, but it's really. Yeah. Now, would you say that you put the ass in bluegrass? <laughs> it has been said we put recently. the ass in a lot of things. But yeah. <laughs> I think that's going to find its way to a bumper sticker soon. <laughs> yeah. um, what drew you guys to incorporate folks like Tim Carbone, Steve Mullitz, Pete Wall um, onto your album All Night Drive? Um, it's it's very unique sonically. What was it that you guys were going for? With or, or, I mean, was it just a result of the circumstance? Were you guys trying to go for that certain progressive sound? Or Certainly, those, those, all those things were happening. Um, I know that, I mean, for me, and, and again, several of the rest of us, we love those bands. We love Railroad Earth, we love Particle. Uh, these are the jam bands that we listen to when we have free time. These are the jam bands that we enjoy going to see. Um, and so, obviously, it was, it was uh, and the fact that they were willing to, like, you know, humorous and play like <laughs> um, but but I mean it was a, it was a natural just hey we love these bands let's let's get more of that involved in sure. um, having played with Particle and Railroad Earth uh, you know I mean I feel like we take things from both of those sort of worlds and sure. um, knowing those guys and being able to being able to work with them obviously was great and um, I think it was at least for me it was it 
focus was I just fought those things. Yeah. So, you know, there cool. was a lot of thought and uh, strategy put into like you know, how we use that on the album, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's been probably one of the coolest and most fun things about just you know achieving a really <coughs> tiny bit of success in this industry. We've got to meet a lot of these guys. That we mm -hmm. like their bands, and then we get to meet them and play with them and collaborate and do things. Um, so there was like a lot of people that we talked about and were like, oh, we could put them on the album, put them on the album. But then we tried to narrow the focus down to like, what's best going to support the songs? Mm -hmm. What's best going to support the mood of that song that we're trying to do? Because there, there are, there are ninety degree turns on that album. Yeah, that um, album is really up and down. It's, yeah. It's, a great album, really diverse. Yeah, those, and you just couldn't tracks. go crazy, right? You had to put a little thought, I guess, behind right. it. And that was a big part of Tim. Help, like, we're, 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 going, we're going too crazy here. Was it Tim that produced that? Yep. Yes. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, the tracks, like, with Steve on it and stuff, mm -hmm. are just so, you know, different than what I anticipated hearing when I started the CD and as it kind of, you know, progressed. But yeah. it, it's great stuff, good material. Yeah, I, mean, I, just, I just think it always needs to be said anytime we're talking about the band and music in general, just we just love music, mm -hmm. we love playing music. Oftentimes after a show, we'll hang out with some guitars and, and just play all our favorite <clears throat> songs from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and the current decade. Mm -hmm. No matter the genre, you know, no matter you know, what you call it, we just you know, a lot of some of us have jazz backgrounds. Sure. You know, we just love playing music, and and this genre of music just personally for me, I think it allows a band to kind of like just explore different realms and not kind of be boxed in so much. And I, I love that because I think you know. I want to have a good long life playing music and, mm -hmm. and doing different things with it, like playing, you know, going different places, and that's really what it's about. You know? It's a very open-ended scene. There are no it, rules in jam yeah. band music yeah, these right. days. So that, Early yeah. on, I think there kind of were, but it's crazy these yeah. days. Everybody's yeah. fusing just bizarre things, yeah. and so, you know, we don't have to be scared to try anything. We right. can try anything. That's got to be a good feeling. Too. Yeah, as long as it feels good for us as the group and the band, we don't necessarily worry about how it's going to fit between two other songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, we just kind of get, get a go with it. The rules are wide open. That's fun. I think yeah. that's really fun. Yeah, yeah. It's it's cool. It also speaks to the question about you know Colorado being saturated with, with bluegrass bands. I mean, you know, like yeah, we have colleagues and contemporaries and bands that we you know can do shows with. You mm -hmm. know, um, but at the same time, it's like you know, every band's got to find its own identity, regardless of the labels that are being you know put on that band. I think a band like Railroad Earth is a great example. Of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they you know, either a bluegrass band, I know they're a folk band, maybe you know, I mean. So, you know, every band's got to find their own identity. With, with all, you know, each, like, like Howard said, every person's got their own background, every, every musician's got their own experiences they bring, mm -hmm. and it's really an organic, you know, beautiful thing. It's like, it's like being in a chemistry lab, where you're just throwing different things together and seeing what you get. Right. And uh, as long as there's quality involved, as long as the ingredients you're throwing in are good ingredients mm -hmm. and the quality's there, you're going to come up with an awesome, some, some new and something cool. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, what are you guys. What's your focus going into 2011 here? Yeah. <clears throat> well, we're, we're shopping for representation right now um, and seeing where that leads. I think that uh, is probably a, a big progression for us. We've all kind of been self-maintained, self-managed up to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's a big, big focus. And then just one, one more year of trying to get into the festivals, a little bit mm -hmm. better slots, a little bit How's more the booking been recently? I mean, you guys... It, it we've, ne we've never been this busy. I yeah. mean, it's it's a good feeling. We've been able to turn work down, mm -hmm. which up to this point we've kind of like, oh, take everything we can get all yeah. the time. Um, now we're actually picking and choosing and trying to be smart about what we pick and, and, and worry about um, what the schedule looks like and, and, and keeping things fresh and playing the right place at the right times. Um, and uh, you know, I know for a fact we're about to do some shows with Cornell coming up, so right. it's exciting that's for us. Pairing. You know, so uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're just trying to pair with other bands, collaborations, and. Uh, I, and I think just uh, representation, we've been in negotiations with several people, and cool. we'll, we'll find the right one. Yeah. Cool. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck in 2011. Uh, so thank much. you guys very much. Oh, Cheers. Absolutely. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Whitewater Ramble. Cheers. Cheers.